Hey guys, I got a copy of the Cherry Audio Mercury 6. It's an emulation of the Roland Jupiter 6. And I used to have one and I showed it on my channel. I showed how to install the Europa mod for it. And that fixed all the problems with it. And once it was working great, I sold it after that. And the price has shot up quite a bit, but I did keep the original uh, Jupiter 6 manual that I had with it and I had a nice little fold out there of what the front panel looks like and I flipped through that really quickly to see uh, how it worked again but uh, it's a really straightforward synth and has an excellent design to it so let's take a look at what I did with it and so for beginners or those really new to this synthesizer I'm going to show some of the features of it and you'll get a better understanding as we make the PBS logo sound, the AFX Acid 04 sound on the second note, a piano that sounds nothing like a real piano. Cool steel drum. AFX stone in focus layered sound. And a fake side chain. So here we have the Mercury 6. Now if you want to hear all the presets in it, you should get the demo and put it on your computer and listen to it through your system and see what you think of the presets. I'm not a preset person, so I'll probably never use any of the presets. I'm just gonna hit new here. And now we've got a kind of init patch, although it has selected, it looks like VCO1 has a different wave. Let's put them both on saw wave. And I'll turn the VCO mixer over to one. So now I'm just listening to a single wave. There's this focus button up here. This is a cool feature, I like this. You hit focus, and now you can use two fingers, at least on the Apple mouse pad, to move around the thing. So starting off looking at the VCOs, it would make sense to me, you have two VCOs, and they're almost the same. You've got triangle, saw, pulse, and square wave on VCO1. Well, VCO2 uh, replaces out the square wave with noise, and then you blend those using this mixer. And they're marked in the conventional organ markings of feet of pipe to get the different pitches of the VCOs. So the first way you can change the pitch of the VCO is with the keyboard. You can select a pitch. And it has more polyphony than the original. It had six voices. And this one you can decide how many voices max here. 16 you can have. So 
one way you can modulate the pitch is by using VCO2 to modulate VCO1 with cross modulation. And VCO2 has a low setting where you can use it as kind of an LFO moving very slowly. And you can use cross modulation to make metallic patches such as my patch I made. It's supposed to be a Caribbean steel drum. So I made a steel drum with it. Well, another thing you can do to modulate the sound of your VCO is to sync it. And so if I hit this sync button right here, then turn this mixer over to VCO1 so we're not hearing VCO2. And VCO2 is forcing VCO1 to end its wave when it's not done with this, the full cycle. And then when I've applied envelope 1 here, I turned this up to modulate it and selected VCO1. And it's giving it the sound of the spit in the trumpet. But when you sync it up, you get this. I've added a little LFO to it for vibrato and delayed it a little with the second one here. Certain notes that you play that you can actually get that trill that you hear uh, trumpet players sometimes do by raising the sustain. So if I play, I think it works well on the D here. And you've heard them do that before. And as you get into the higher notes, you actually start hearing some of those trumpet harmonics. It's not easy to do a piano on any synth, but the Jupiter 6 had sync and also cross mod. And using both of those, you might get a couple of harmonics that could sound a little like a piano if you don't play too much for somebody and you just move on. By selecting the pulse wave, you can manually move this potentiometer here and get different sounds. And if you move it quickly, you can hear kind of a growling sound. Now you can use a kind of a utility to move that for you. Now you won't see an animation of it moving, but that is what's happening. If you use this potentiometer here, you can use this as the depth of what you're doing. You can use the LFO to modulate this for you. So you can go like that, or you can use this to do it for you. See, that's just the LFO moving that for me. Or you can use the envelope. Now, envelope one here, it has two envelopes. And envelope one is kind of a utility that you can use. And envelope one is usually routed to the filter, but it can be used for other things. And you can see here, VCA envelope two levels. So it's routed to the VCA for the volume. But you can use envelope one to move this. And you hear it moving across there. Another way to change the pitch of VCO is with the LFO. So we could use that for vibrato. And you can delay its effect so that you hit a key and then it does it a little later. You can change the pitch using the envelope. Again, using it kind of as a utility. Envelope. And we, let's do a quick uh, PBS thing here. Let's change the LFO to uh, square wave. 
and we'll use both of these to modulate the pitch. So now we're doing the PBS thing. We're using both of these, the envelope to make the pitch fall and the LFO to move it back and forth with the square wave. So to me, this is the first thing in the chain and it is VCO. These other things are being used to, to modulate the VCO. Then the signal goes through the filter. And here you have a high pass filter, band pass filter, and low pass filter. And it gets much quieter. And then there are ways you can modulate the filter. You can modulate it using the envelope. And we can use the LFO to modulate it. Use the LFO to modulate the filter. All right, now I think I've shown enough on it now that we could do this Acido 4 sound. So go listen to the recording of AFX Acido 4 and then come back and try to make the sound on the Mercury 6. All right, so I would, I would probably start over and hit new, and then it's got the sub oscillator that's a square wave. And so what we can do is on the first oscillator here, we can choose square wave for that. And it's a sub oscillator, so it'll be an octave lower. So we'll leave that where it is, but we'll turn the range on VCO2 up to eight feet and it'll be a saw. So, so far we have this. Now that sound of the modulation is the LFO modulating the filter. So we'll turn the filter frequency down and we'll turn LFO one up and let it modulate that with the random LFO and then start turning up the frequency. Oh, let's turn the resonance up as well. Yeah, and then if we uh, alternate back and forth between D and F on the keyboard. And then there is keyboard tracking of the filter. Water droplets in a cave. I seem to recall that on my Jupiter 6, I could put it over on oscillator 2, or maybe it was the oscillator 1 mess around with the pulse width and turn the resonance all the way up on the filter and I could actually play the filter. Turn up keyboard tracking here so that the filter will track the notes as you go up the keyboard. I don't think this works exactly like my Jupiter 6 worked for whatever reason. Then the sound goes through the VCA and that is controlled here by envelope 2 and you may have heard the side chain I was getting on my little intro song there. So I just ran the LFO into the VCA, VCA using this potentiometer here. And with the kick, I got a side chain. But what I had to do was offset all of my other tracks because this LFO makes the opposite of a side chain. So I, I would ask that Cherry Audio in an update would make it so I can click this waveform here on the LFO again and it flips this waveform. Choose to do the multi timbrel and have two patches and layer those together. That's something that the original Jupiter didn't have, but that's a great feature, I like that. You can choose layer or split and decide where on the keyboard it's split. And so you can have different settings here for the layer and you can have it drift 
which gives that old analog sound and tune it differently, pan the layers differently. My favorite VST is probably the Tal Uno, and it has a service center where it's actually like you're able to get inside the synthesizer and service it and turn some screws inside. And so with that, you can kind of do an Aphex Twin micro-tuning. So it's not just kind of doing a chaos with all the different parameters. It's something that you can actually control a little bit. So it would be cool if Cherry Audio would do something like this. You can have Portamento slide. You can have Glissando, which is where it slides, but it plays every note along the way. Then it has an arpeggiator. And you can hold it so that you just hit the keys once. And it stays there. And you can change the maximum number of voices for the sake of your computer CPU. And I noticed up here you could also change the quality, the oversampling quality, probably to take less a uh, hit on your CPU as well. And you have different modes of play, like you have solo, where it just plays one note at a time, and the second note will replace it, so you can do stuff like this, where you hold one note down and play the other note on and off. And then with Unison Detune, you can have all the oscillators on one key and detune them. And then Poly Mode, where it allows smearing. So they smear it over each other. And then Poly 2 won't allow that to happen. They will sustain out. And then, of course, the, the fantastic chord mode. Click it. Now I'll play a chord. And you can save it like that. So it'll rem remember that chord. And then this is your multi-timbral stuff. You have two patches. You can do one on the whole thing and you can layer two patches together and toggle between them and when you toggle a lot of these things turn kind of a bluish purple and so you know if you're on the upper patch or lower patch and you can also split those on the keyboard do layers solo utility copy layers reset copy the effects import and export now this layer function is really cool. I was able to make an Aphex Twin Stone in Focus patch. So I've got the upper section of it. And let me solo that layer out. So that's a cello I made. And then it has the lower function, solo that out. Which the cool thing is you can tune it up a fourth. And so that's tuned up a fourth. And then when you put the whole patch together, And then you have the effects. So for Fiji Horizon, I'm using the chorus, and it, it sounds amazing. Love how it's the effects sound. So I'll sh let you hear with and without, and you, you be the judge. Now I'll turn the flanger chorus effect off.
I think to that patch, it's it's everything. But they also have other effects. Uh, reverb sounds really good. Let's turn it on. And you have different types and different decays, a lot of control over it, which is great. And then, of course, a delay, a phaser. I really like the phaser. Let me turn the reverb off. distortion as well. Well, it was fun playing around with the Cherry Audio Mercury 6. I really love it. Absolutely love it. Now, those patches I made are going to be available to my patrons. So join me over on my Patreon. I'll put a link and there's not just patches for the Mercury 6, there's patches for all of the Tau VSTs to do AFX, AFX Twin, Boards of Canada, and all that type of stuff. 90s house music. Tons of patches, tons of information over there, so join me over on my Patreon. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.